Assembling a high quality model steam plant part 6. More modifications to the hand pump and starting to make the condenser. The liquid in this container is cellulose thinners or lacquer thinners as it's known in the USA and I'm immersing the pump in this liquid to remove the paint. And while the cellulose thinners is dissolving the paint I thought it was a good time to start the condenser. At the end of the last episode I went up to Blackgates Engineering and bought a piece of tube and some 3mm thick brass sheet and I'm currently cutting the brass sheet to the size that I need it to be and these two pieces of brass will form the ends of the condenser I'm making this up as I go along, I often do that, I don't work the drawings I just know what I want it to look like so I just get on with it and if when I've made the condenser it looks terrible then I'll just make another one that doesn't look quite so bad but in my mind's eye this is not going to look terrible, it's going to look dead right and it will match the boiler area of the steam plant. Some viewers might think that this is going to look terrible, but I don't, I think it will be okay. This, by the way, is a horizontal condenser. It's not the vertical type, like the ones that I used to build and sell. And why is it not a vertical condenser? Well, a couple of reasons. One is it would have to be quite tall to have the capacity to handle the condensate from a steam engine like a Twin Victoria. And the other reason is, it sits on the baseboard in the general area of the gas tank, and that is also in a horizontal plane. Right then, and what am I doing here? I'm marking out the positions for the three exhaust inlets. Two of them will be for the exhaust from the Twin Victoria, and the other one will handle the exhaust from the steam pump. It's over down to the drilling machine. And please don't write in and tell me I shouldn't be holding pieces of metal in my hand. Being a keyboard player, I'm well aware of that. I'm really hoping that this very small centre drill doesn't grab the piece of brass and spin it round and sever three of my fingers, or maybe the full set. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I always keep the belts on the drilling machine quite slack, so if things do grab, they don't go very far. When I up the drill size, and this is a 7 30 seconds of an inch drill, then I don't hold the piece of metal because if this grabs the piece of brass, yes, it will spin it round. So in order to prevent that, I've clamped the piece of brass quite gently in the machine vise that sits on the drill. This is called a cross vise. It's a very cheap and nasty affair, but it's a good thing to have in your workshop because anything's better than cutting your hand off. And so now that I've taken the time to clarify this very simple health and safety procedure, I can continue with the job. I'm drilling hole number three, which is at the other side. As you can hear from the video, the drill is making a funny squeaking noise. That's because the drill is blunt. I do use this rather a lot. It's the tapping size drill for quarter by 40 threads per inch. I'm also drilling a single hole at the bottom end of the condenser. This is for the condensate drain. And I'm threading this 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. In order to make sure that the thread is perfectly square in the hole, I'm using the tapping guide that I made a while back. When I made this particular tapping guide, I made a video showing how I made it. And so if you want to make one of your own, and believe me, they are very useful, please watch the video where I showed how I made this. I would think that it's part of the Model Engineering for Beginners series. For some reason, some viewers have difficulty finding my videos, and I don't know why this is. On YouTube, there is a facility to create playlists and I create playlists for just about every video that I make. For instance, this video that you're watching is part of the series called Assembling a High Quality Model Steam Plant. So that lives in a playlist called Assembling a High Quality Model Steam Plant. So if you find the series, you can watch the videos. And it's the same with just about everything. Have a look at the title of the series then check the playlists for that title, and when you click on that playlist, you have every one of the episodes which will run back to back. And during this time I've been speaking about playlists, I've finished tapping all the holes, and here they are with fittings installed. This is the wrong side though, this is the side that will be inside the tube. I just wanted to show you how I'm going to find out where I put the tube. And as you can see very clearly from this image, I just drew around the tube with a felt tip pen. It just seemed to be the simplest way to do it. Why bother scoring a line when you can draw around it with a felt tip pen? What I need to do with the other end plate is just drill one hole in it, and this is for the exhaust pipe to the chimney. But the first thing I need to do is find the centre of the circle, and I'm doing that with a ruler 
first horizontally and then vertically. And I get a cross in the center, which is the center of the circle, or near enough for jazz anyway. I measured the width at the bottom of the metal plate, divided that by two, put the ruler between that and the center mark, and then I got the position for the top hole. And I've marked the position with my felt tip pen. And as always, I use a center drill first to drill the pilot hole, and then I drill through tapping size for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. And the tapping size drill is two imperial drill sizes down from 3 8 And in this clip, I'm threading the hole. I don't have a tapping guide for this size, but I can generally sight it up okay. So this is roughly how the condenser is going to look. The tube's not in the right position, it's just sat on the fittings. But I'm sure you get the idea how it's going to look from the image on screen at the moment. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.